you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of a modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing and renewing and regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about prescription drugs or nutritional supplements or ingredients you may have heard about or read about, skincare, we're talking skincare now, and we will be talking skincare for a while. If you have questions about hyaluronic acid or any of the ingredients we've been talking about, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we will get your calls in our second segment. We have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Natasha Trenev, world-renowned expert and the founder of the probiotic industry, the mother, if you will, of the probiotic industry. She's actually called the mother of probiotics. She uh, has spent the last 40 years talking about the benefits of so-called good bacteria since 1970. She's been researching. Uh, researching probiotics, and she's going to have a lot to say about gut health, digestive health, and probiotics. We'll talk to Natasha Trenev, the mother of probiotics, in the bottom of the hour. So if you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, or if you have a success story you'd like to share or contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls here in our second segment. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, or if you'd like to join my team and help spread the word about how important and how powerful a nutritional supplement program can be and help change lives, you can join the Brightside Ben team or order products by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and order products directly off of the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of my Truth Treatment products, Truth Skin Health products, you can go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Check out our Omega-6 Healing Cream, Vitamin C, uh, Vitamin C Night Balm, and uh, True Serum, as well as our Retinol Gel. And that's all at truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking skin health, skin care products. As I say, we'll get your calls here in our next segment, 844-236-6010. There's two ways to buy a skincare product, or rather to make a skincare buying decision, skincare product buying decision. You can make it your decision based on how a product feels or what a product will do for your skin. Neither is good or neither is bad. You just got to know what you're looking for. Problem comes for when we confuse the two, our two motivations. When we think that because a product feels good that it's doing something for the skin. Conflating feel good with does something. Feel good with doing something. That's not true. Just because a product feels like something's happening on the skin doesn't mean anything's really happening. Skincare companies know how to make things feel a certain way. And for the most part, when you feel a product on your skin, you're not feeling your skin, you're feeling the product. And we have been led to believe that this is moisturization. Sometimes pe people will put on a, a product on their skin and they'll go, oh, that's not very moisturizing. What they really mean is that the product went down deep into the lower levels of the skin and they can no longer feel the product. This is not moisturization. This is a hypnotic trance. If we believe that the oil and the wax and the grease and the gook and the yuckiness of a skincare lotion or cream on the surface of the skin is moisturization, we're in a hypnotic trance. And it's a hypnotic trance we're encouraged to feel by skincare companies who make a lot of money selling grease and a lot of money selling wax and a lot of money selling oil. Your typical skincare product is made up of wax and grease and oil and water and a little tiny smattering, if we're lucky, of an active material. Is that what we really want? from a skincare product, wax and oil and grease on the surface of the skin. Now, I'm not saying that's bad to rub something on your skin 
and say, oh, I'm moisturizer. Oh, that feels good. If there's nothing wrong with the sensual nature of a skincare product. It feels like something's happening. That's great. But the problem comes from when we're led to believe that we're actually doing something to our skin. We're creating a change in the skin. Now, we've been talking about hyaluronic acid, one of the most important components in the structure of the skin. We've been talking about how it's important for the internal part of the body, how it's an important part of skin health, an important part of the health of our internal organs, important part, important, an important part of bone health and connective tissue health. But what's not going to happen is you're not going to be able to rub hyaluronic acid as important as it is on the surface of the skin and do anything for the internal nature of your skin, the internal structure of your skin. Not that you're not going to get any benefits by putting HA on the surface. You may get some skin softening benefits. You may get some stratum corneum, that is the surface of the skin, benefits. You may plasticize it or liquefy it or somehow make it a little bit more pliable so it's not as uncomfortable, but you're not going to create permanent changes by rubbing it on the surface of the skin. If you really want to upregulate, the best word in, in all of nutrition and health, upregulate, increase, if you really want to get more hyaluronic acid in your skin, you want to learn how to exercise your skin. You want to learn how to stimulate or turn on the metabolism, the chemistry of the skin. And there's lots of ways of doing this. I call it skin exercise. And I'm not talking about muscle exercise or skin muscle exercise, as important as that is. Yes, it's important to do contracting and relaxing exercises for your face, and you'll get some connective tissue benefits that way, and that's great. But that's not what I'm talking about when I talk, when I talk about skin exercise. When I talk about skin exercise, I'm talking about increasing the production of hyaluronic acid and moisture factors and growth hormones and natural sun protection and healing molecules in the skin. Exercising or stimulating or improving the movement, the dynamic nature of skin cells and their chemical byproducts like hyaluronic acid and squalane and cholesterol, and these are all very important for keeping the skin healthy. Yes, cholesterol, very, very important. Like cholesterol is one of the most important molecules in the, in the entire body. It's one of the most important molecules in the skin. Statin drugs are associated with skin dryness for good reason because they suppress cholesterol production not just in the liver but also in the skin. In any case, upregulating, increasing the production of cholesterol, squalane, hyaluronic acid, growth factors, etc., is an awesome strategy for keeping your skin healthy. And by far and away, the most important and topically relevant way to exercise your skin is by dropping the pH. That is making the skin more acidic. The skin is already acidic, healthy skin is. If you have psoriasis or you have eczema or you have a skin health issue, chances are your skin is not as acidic as it needs to be. Alkaline or high pH skin, relatively high pH skin is associated with various skin diseases. So dropping the pH of the skin temporarily, the skin will buffer itself back up to where it needs to be, which is slightly acidic. The, the pH of the skin is right around mm, probably... Uh, Probably, if your skin is healthy, it's probably around 4.5 to 5.5, somewhere in there. But dropping the pH of the skin down to 3-ish, that can have a very important stimulating effect. That's what I mean by skin exercise. I'm talking about dropping the pH, making the skin more acidic. Now, if you're lifting weights, I say uh, uh, no pain, no gain, right? If you're lifting weights and you, and you lift your weights, I mean, if you just lift your, do your curls. Let's take curls for an example. You do your curls. You're going to get some, some nice muscle building benefits, but if you get to the point where you're feeling a burn, you're going to get even better benefits, even more benefits. If you lift weights, you know, you do five reps, say, with a, with a 20 pound dumbbell, you do curls, say five repetitions, you're going to get some good muscle building effects. Some, you'll, you'll definitely build some muscle, but if you go to the place where you feel the burn, you're going to get even better effects. And what is that burn? What has that got to do with the skin? Well, hang tight. We'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll get your calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and via archive 24-7 on brightsideben.com, also benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. If you miss a program or you want to review a program, uh, you can search benfuchsarchives.com, also brightsideben.com. And I also want to encourage you to check out my blogs, pharmacistben.com 
and uh, criticalhealthnews.com. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, you can do them right off the websites. Brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to purchase any of my Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we'll get your calls here in just a sec. Uh, we're going to talk to Natasha Trenev, the mother of the probiotic industry in the bottom of the hour. We'll get your calls here in this segment. And I wanted to just tell you a little bit more about dropping the pH of the skin. You can uh, use glycolic acid. And most women know about glycolic acid. Women being more hip to skin care than guys are. Lactic acid, glycolic acid, apple cider vinegar, red wine, lemon juice, which contains citric acid or lime juice, kiwi juice, fruit juices of all kinds, orange juice even. You can make your own skin care toners. Well, uh, you know what? We'll, we'll talk about this tomorrow. We'll talk about dropping the pH, making the skin more acidic. Keeping in mind, by the way, that the skin will buffer itself back up again. We'll, it will raise the pH, it, its pH back up again to where it needs to be. So you're not going to do any permanent changes to the skin, but just that little bolt of acid, much like when you lift weights, you get a little jolt of lactic acid. Lactic acid acts as a growth hormone. Did you know lactic acid is a growth hormone inside the body? It stimulates, not a hormone, but a growth substance. It stimulates growth. Lactic acid turns on growth inside the body for muscles. That's why you feel the burn. Likewise, it does the same thing on the skin. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking skin exercise, skin health, ingredients that work and ingredients that don't on the bright side. All right, let's hit our phones, 844-236-6010. Joe in Pennsylvania. Joe Pa, as they say. What's up, Joe Pa? Yeah, Joe hi, Ben. Uh, How you doing? Good morning, and uh, thanks for what you do. We need Thank more you. advocates like you. I appreciate and, that. Yeah, we hear you on Coast to Coast. You're certainly uh, an asset there, and I'm a longtime listener there. And I just recently spoke to you. And uh, they must have been in some kind of a hurry because they kind of rushed me out before I got a chance to speak to you about uh, two people that I had in mind. I spoke to you about uh, Dr. George Von Tossel, the Integraton. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was the Integraton. I remember you. I remember your voice. Was it on yeah. Coast to Coast we talked, right? Yes, that's correct. And then there was a, another person who uh, was responsible for bringing out the most powerful microscope, uh, and that was Royal Rife, Dr. Oh, Royal yes. Rife. Oh, yes, Royal Rife. That, that's the guy I was trying to think of when, when we were talking about radionics, right? That was with George. Yeah. Was to, yeah, I was trying to think of his name. I couldn't think of his name. And they mentioned uh, Abrams, who's the guy who came up with the, the whole concept. But uh, go ahead. Talk, let, you're going to talk about the Rife machine? Is that what you're yes. talking about? Tell yes. us. Tell us a little bit about it. I got a couple calls I want to get to, so do it as quickly as you can here, Joe. And I okay. to, you can always call back tomorrow. We'll have more time to talk if you like. Okay, real good, Ben. Well, I'll just summarize it quick for your audience. There, this gentleman was uh, responsible for bringing out the most powerful microscope in the early 1920s, and then his technology evolved into an open tube technology, where it would be somewhere around the ultrasonic range of electromagnetics to to influence the body at different nodal points of the human body. And he had astounding uh, results. He went and traveled the country curing tuberculosis and cancer. And I always thought, uh, why did they take that technology? Why did they suppress that technology? And, uh, and I, I just, he just had such good results, and I just never realized why they, they suppressed that technology. Maybe Do you, you realize now? <laughs> Do you yeah. realize now? They're not interested in helping people necessarily. If they can't bill them, unfortunately, that's the way our healthcare system works. Did I explain the Integraton correctly? By the way, it is a sound well, machine, right? Yeah. Well, it's not just a sound machine. That no. was the whole gamut. That went from uh, the DC range all the way up into electromagnetic, uh, subsonic, from subsonic up into uh, the ra way above radio frequencies, and. Uh, all the research I've done on it in the last 20 years, I'm a scientist myself. What do you do? What not a bioscientist. Science? Biology? But, uh, Did you say biology? No, I'm, a, I'm engineering, electrical engineering. You sound and, like an interesting uh, guy, Joe. I hate, to, I hate to cut you off. I'd love to talk to you. Why don't you do this? Can you, can you shoot me an email with your phone number, and you and I can have a, a personal conversation, and maybe we can have you on, and you can uh, give you a little bit more time to explain, uh, explain some of these ideas? Yeah, where can I send, find your email? Send me an email, Ben, B-E-N, at KSCO.com. K for King, S for Sam, C for Cat, 
O for Oscar. And put your phone number on there, Joe, and I'd love to have a conversation with you. And then we can have you back on, and, and I'll give you a little bit more time to talk because you've got some interesting things to say, and I hate to, I hate to rush you. Okay? okay very good, Ben. Thank, Thank you so time. much, Joe. Thanks for the kind words. Bye. God bless you, man. All right, and Angela in Florida, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, so this is Ben. I also hey. want to start off by thanking you for releasing your truth treatment. Um, oh, have you used them? I am a proud owner of the retinol cream and the omega-6 healing cream. Oh, that's awesome. That's the perfect pair, by the way. So are you, tell, me, tell me a little bit about how you're using them. Tell the listeners as well. Well, I just got them in my hands about a week ago, and I'm already seeing the kind of results going through. But it, Don't overuse that retinol. It's powerful. And, and you're using the Omega-6 healing cream after you use the retinol the next day? How are you using that? Right. So Okay, so I'll start off with a little bit of the gel from the retinol gel. And I will work that into my face while my face is a little wet. Um, it'll dry nicely. And then maybe a day, day and a half, I'll start to see the sloughing off. And it's a lot of sloughing. I don't know if that's normal. Yeah, that's it's normal. Like that's a, Yes, that sloughing okay. is stimulating new, new collagen, new moisture factors, getting rid of dark spots, all of that. And then you use the Omega-6 healing cream? Right. When all that starts happening, it really starts breaking up the skin. I'll wash my face again, take off the little flicks gently, and then I'll put on the healing cream. But oh, I very also nice. wear makeup. I'm not sure if that makes Well, that's not fun. great. You, we're going to get to where you don't need makeup, Angela. And then uh, how long did you take? Did one, you notice results in one dose or two doses? As far as the sloughing? Yeah, was the first time I tried it on the next day. Oh, that's that beautiful. Good deal. Don't overuse. That, that retinol is going to last you four or five months. That $179 is like 20 bucks a month or maybe $25 a month when you, when you add it all up because it's going to last you a long time. Thanks for that. I appreciate you saying that. How can we help you today? I wanted to talk about um, this vitamin, this 2% vitamin K cream I have from Moviva. I'm using it for my dark circles, which I've had forever, and I think it's due to um, the circulation. Right. It's not I a skin to... problem. It's not a skin issue. It's a circulation issue. It's very common. Dark, even kids will get dark circles under their eyes when they have food allergies, and that's really, that's really a clue to what's going on. When you see dark circles under the eyes, it is not a skin issue. It is a circulation issue, and you're actually peering into the, into the blood vessels that are located close to the surface and uh, where the skin is very thin underneath the eyes. So you're actually looking in at your circulation, and you're seeing the pigments, blood pigments, that are leaking out of vessels. It could have to do with bruising or it could have to do with, a poor, with poor circulation, but either way, it has to do with the circulatory system, either the movement of blood or a breakdown in the blood vessels. So you want to focus on a cellular, a, a blood movement circulation, and that means, number one, moving your body around, and number two, keeping uh, dirt, and by dirt I mean food dirt and digestive dirt, out of the bloodstream at the digestive system level. Angela, we got, I want to take, uh, we got a guest coming up in the bottom of the hour. Uh, if you could call back tomorrow, I'll give you some more information. And thank you so much for the kind words about the Truth Treatment products. I apologize. I just got to cut you off because we got a guest coming up. By the way, truthtreatments.com if you're interested in purchasing uh, the retinol gel. We're talking to the mother of probiotics, Natasha Trenev, coming up next. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. the bright side. Thank you for joining us. We are uh, we're going to be talking to the mother of the probiotic industry, the mother of probiotics, as she calls herself. Natasha Trenev has been studying probiotics for many years. She's got a book out, Probiotics, Nature's Internal Healers. Uh, gosh, I went to UCLA in 1970, studied uh, probiotics for, it says here, a decade of research led to her developing her first method for producing an effective and scientifically validated strain of bacteria. One thing people don't realize is that probiotics are living. They're not supplements like vitamin C, as important as vitamins and minerals are. These things are living creatures, living entities, and that makes probiotics a little bit trickier than ordinary supplements. We're going to uh, talk to Natasha Trenev about that. Greetings, Natasha. Welcome to The Bright Side. Good morning. Uh, may I call you Dr. Ben? No, because I'm not a doctor. You can call oh, me you're Pharmacist not. Ben. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, can call me, you can call me Ben or Pharmacist Ben. Just call me Ben. That's great. And, and you're a PhD? Or are you an, uh, no, I'm sorry. not a PhD. I'm a self taught microbiologist. But, um, and I'd like to say that uh, it was the industry that dubbed me the mother of probiotics. I, I didn't choose that illustrious title for myself. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, good. It's pretty illustrious and it's pretty big. You know, when I started talking about probiotics, we learned about them in pharmacy school. And I started talking about probiotics in the 1980s, believe it or not. Nobody had any idea what I was talking about. These days, you, know, you, you see them on television. You see probiotics advertised on television. And the reason is, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, is because the stuff is so darn effective. You know, it is it effective, but it is, uh, if, I, if I may say, rocket science. Uh, you know, I've dedicated 45 years of my life to this, and um, I, I introduced the category of probiotics to the uh, <clears throat> natural health industry or the dietary supplement industry in the late 1970s, early 1980s, and people, as you say, didn't know what, what didn't have a clue of what I was talking about. Uh, at that time, the only thing we had was acidophilus and uh, sort of worthless yogurt pills as supplements. Uh, uh, that were feigning to be probiotics. But, you know, my family was the first to introduce a liquid acidophilus to this country uh, in the mid-1960s. And I work with uh, such greats as uh, Del Davis and uh, Gaylord Hauser wow. and R. Jensen. You, what, well, you knew Adele? You knew uh, Del Davis? I knew, I knew her very well. Wow, she was the first, my first nutritionist back in the day was Adele Davis. Yeah, uh, Adele Davis uh, gave a lecture at the um, Ambassador Hotel <clears throat> and when we were still selling continental liquid acidophilus, and we had so many people at our booth after she mentioned how important acidophilus was that, uh, that we, they, they called the fire department on us because nobody could get through the aisles. Oh, um, that's hysterical. Yeah, Let's Eat Right to Keep Fit. That was one of the first book I read on, on right. nutrition. She was, a one, she was a wonderful human being, I can tell you that. Wow. Yeah, she's been gone for a long time, 40 years. Yeah, I was, years. I was uh, you know, just, uh, I think, in university when I first met her and actually gave her all of my translated articles that I got from the Academy of Sciences. At that time, it was Leningrad, and uh, shared my first research with her, and she was delighted to, to have it. And she was such a humble lady. That's a great story. So what, what's the one thing you want people to know about probiotics or one, the one misunderstanding that people have that you want to clear up? Well, the, the biggest misunderstanding is that people think that multiple strains of uh, probiotics mixed in one product uh, is better than controlling which, <clears throat> excuse me, which strain you have to target each part of the 27 feet of GI tract. Interesting. And, uh, there's, uh, there's, and, and also the, big, the, the second biggest misinformation is that there's such things as uh, shelf-stable probiotics. Uh, it is totally incorrect, and the reason I can make these two statements is that uh, um, I was asked by the industry repeatedly in the 1980s to come up with a labeling standard for probiotics uh, for, uh, <clears throat> for the industry to show that we were trying to self-regulate. So my first standard was voted on by the entire health food industry, all the retailers, manufacturers, distributors, brokers, educators, etc. Uh, and it was passed in 1989. And then it was uh, later read into congressional record in 1994 as part of our attempt to get the Shea passed. And uh, so it's, it's not just me saying this. And what I'm saying is that if anybody knew what the standards were, um, you know, 80 percent of those products would be thrown out of the stores. Interesting. So you, are you saying that they need to be refrigerated then? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, when they talk about shelf stable, they're talking about controlled laboratory temperature of 72 degrees. Hmm. And if you ever read any of those labels very carefully, it'll make remarks like best, uh, 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 no, uh, kept, uh, uh, refrigerate for best the results or, you know, do not expose to heat, all kinds of warnings, but they're made in six point type on the label, which I yeah. find very annoying. Uh, because it's not just about selling my probiotics, it's about making sure that this category uh, doesn't get abused so that people get turned off to this, what I call the most important concept uh, for health for the 21st century. Now, to distinguish food <clears throat> probiotics, uh, food-based probiotics from supplements. Okay, uh, food pay, uh, food based Fermented probiotics, foods and such. my family also introduced natural style Bulgarian yogurt under the name of continental yogurt in the, mm. the 1960s. Uh, you know, yogurt and other fermented foods are what we call functional foods. In other words, the fermentation process uh, makes uh, all of the nutrients more absorbable and more digestible, but uh, the fermented food does not provide adequate numbers of bacteria uh, to impact the 100 trillion bacteria that line our gut. 
Is, is, isn't that and so, interesting? You know, and, and the reason this has changed over the last 60 years is because we have created superbugs uh, by the abuse of antibiotics, uh, by, you know, uh, eating a highly processed uh, sugary diet. This has changed the composition of our gut. And the normal fermented foods that, say, 100 years ago could help us uh, improve our gut flora are, are no longer sufficient enough to really make that change. Now, isn't it interesting how we have, I don't know, a quadrillion bacteria in our digestive tracts and throughout our body, something like that probably? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. How does a probiotic supplement that contains maybe, I don't know, 15 billion units or something like that, which is a, a fraction of the amount of bacteria that we have in our gut, how does that have an effect on, on the, bacterial, uh, uh, bacteria, the population of the bacteria wow. in the gut? Yeah, great question. Well, first of all, uh, we, we have 100 trillion bacteria lining that 27 feet of GI tract. And we have actually uh, more bacteria than we have human cells. We're actually 90% bacteria and only 10% human That's cells. That's interesting. Huh? Cellular, cell, cell wise, there's only about five pounds, or I don't know, what is it, five or 10 pounds, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it? three, it's about three and a half to four pounds of, if you weigh the bacteria because they're microscopic. Right. That's why you don't see them. So that's an excellent question. Uh, it's, you know, um, science has shown, because I, I've gone through about uh, 5,000 research articles in my life, uh, that, you know, it's, it's about a billion or two billion uh, healthy microbes that make it uh, through shelf life and your gastric juices that will have an impact on this uh, microflora. And the reason being is that if the bacteria come intact uh, into your small intestine, uh, they can multiply rapidly as well. Uh, you can have uh, from one cell growth to uh, 8 billion cells within a couple of hours. So, in other words, if you take a, a, a 10 billion unit supplement, it could be 800 billion or... or right, but, but, uh, but, but the problem is that, uh, you know, uh, I call it the numbers game. You will see these supplements and they'll tell you they've got 50 billion, 100 billion. What they don't tell you is since the government is not checking, a lot of that potency dies on the shelf. Those organisms oh, are stressed. That's, that's and a they great don't point. survive stomach acid. Um, well, I want to talk know, about that. We've got to take a break. I want to talk about the whole stomach acid thing, empty stomach, full stomach. Hang tight, Natasha, if that's okay. We've got to take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben talking to the mother of the probiotic industry, Natasha Trenev. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a break and be back right after this. Don't go away. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We are uh, we're going to be talking to the mother of the probiotic industry, the mother of probiotics, as she calls herself. Natasha Trenev has been studying probiotics for many years. She's got a book out, Probiotics, Nature's Internal Healers. Uh, gosh, I went to UCLA in 1970, studied uh, probiotics for, it says here, a decade of research led to her developing her first method for producing an effective and scientifically validated strain of bacteria. One thing people don't realize is that probiotics are living. They're not supplements like vitamin C, as important as vitamins and minerals are. These things are living creatures, living entities, and that makes probiotics a little bit trickier than ordinary supplements. We're going to uh, talk to Natasha Trenev about that. Greetings, Natasha. Welcome to The Bright Side. Good morning. Uh, may I call you Dr. Ben? No, because I'm not a doctor. You can call oh, me you're Pharmacist not. Ben. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, can call me, you can call me Ben or Pharmacist Ben. Just call me Ben. That's great. And, and you're a PhD? Or are you an, uh, no, I'm sorry. not a PhD. I'm a self taught microbiologist. But, um, and I'd like to say that uh, it was the industry that dubbed me the mother of probiotics. I, I didn't choose that illustrious title for myself. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. It's pretty illustrious and it's pretty big. You know, when I started talking about probiotics, we learned about them in pharmacy school. And I started talking about probiotics in the 1980s, believe it or not. Nobody had any idea what I was talking about these days. You, know, you, you see them on television. You see probiotics advertised on television. And the reason is, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, is because the stuff is so darn effective. You know, it is it effective, but it is, uh, if, I, if I may say, rocket science. Uh, you know, I've dedicated 45 years of my life to this, and um, I, I introduced the category of probiotics to the uh, 
natural health industry or the dietary supplement industry in the late 1970s, early 1980s, and people, as you say, didn't know what, what didn't have a clue of what I was talking about. Uh, at that time, the only thing we had was acidophilus and uh, sort of worthless yogurt pills as supplements uh, uh, that were feigning to be probiotics. But you know, my family was the first to introduce a liquid acidophilus to this country uh, in the mid 1960s, and I work with uh, such greats as uh, Del Davis and uh, Gaylord Hauser. Wow. Art Jensen. You, what, well, you knew Adele? You knew uh, Adele Davis? I knew, I knew her very well. Wow. She was the fir- my first nutritionist back in the day was Adele Davis. Uh, yeah. Adele Davis uh, gave a lecture at the um, Ambassador Hotel <clears throat> and when we were still selling continental liquid acidophilus. And we had so many people at our booth after she mentioned how important acidophilus was that, uh, that we, they, they called the fire department on us because nobody could get through the aisles. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah, Let's Eat Right to Keep Fit. That was one of the first book I read on, on right. nutrition. She was, a one, she was a wonderful human being, I can tell you that. Wow. Yeah, she's been gone for a long time, 40 years. Yeah, I was, I was uh, you know, just, uh, I think, in university when I first met her and actually gave her all of my translated articles that I got from the Academy of Sciences. At that time, it was Leningrad, and uh, shared my first research with her, and she was delighted to, to have it. And she was such a humble lady. That's a great story. So what, what's the one thing you want people to know about probiotics or one, the one misunderstanding that people have that you want to clear up? Well, the, the biggest misunderstanding is that people think that multiple strains of uh, probiotics mixed in one product uh, is better than controlling which, <clears throat> excuse me, which strain you have to target each part of the 27 feet of GI tract. Interesting. And, uh, there's, uh, there's, and, and also the, big, the, the second biggest misinformation is that there's such things as uh, shelf-stable probiotics. Uh, it is totally incorrect, and the reason I can make these two statements is that uh, um, I was asked by the industry repeatedly in the 1980s to come up with a labeling standard for probiotics uh, for, uh, <clears throat> for the industry to show that we were trying to self-regulate. So my first standard was voted on by the entire health food industry, all the retailers, manufacturers, distributors, brokers, educators, etc. cetera. Uh, and it was passed in 1989. And then it was uh, later read into congressional record in 1994 as part of our attempt to get the Shea passed. And uh, so it's it's not just me saying this. And what I'm saying is that if anybody knew what the standards were, um, you know, 80 percent of those products would be thrown out of the stores. Interesting. So you are you saying that they need to be refrigerated then? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, when they talk about shelf stable, they're talking about controlled laboratory temperature of 72 degrees. Hmm. And if you ever read any of those labels very carefully, it'll make remarks like best, uh, 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 no, uh, kept, uh, uh, refrigerate for best the results or, you know, do not expose to heat, all kinds of warnings, but they're made in six point type on the label, which I yeah. find very annoying. Uh, because it's not just about selling my probiotics, it's about making sure that this category uh, doesn't get abused so that people get turned off to this, what I call the most important concept uh, for health for the 21st century. Now, to distinguish food <clears throat> probiotics, uh, food-based probiotics from supplements. Okay, uh, food pay, uh, food-based Fermented probiotics, foods and such. my family also introduced natural-style Bulgarian yogurt under the name of continental yogurt in the, mm. the 1960s. Uh, you know, yogurt and other fermented foods are what we call functional foods. In other words, the fermentation process uh, makes uh, all of the nutrients more absorbable and more digestible, but uh, the fermented food does not provide adequate numbers of bacteria uh, to impact the 100 trillion bacteria that line our gut. Is, is, isn't that and so, interesting? You know, and, and the reason this has changed over the last 60 years is because we have created superbugs uh, by the abuse of antibiotics, uh, by you know, uh, eating a highly processed uh, sugary diet. This has changed the composition of our gut, and the normal fermented foods that, say, 100 years ago could help us uh, improve our gut flora are, are no longer sufficient enough to really make that change. Now, isn't it interesting how we have, I don't know, a quadrillion bacteria in our digestive tracts and throughout our body, something like that probably? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. How does a probiotic supplement that contains maybe, 
I don't know, 15 billion units or something like that, which is a, a fraction of the amount of bacteria that we have in our gut. How does that have an effect on, on the bacterial, uh, uh, bacteria, the population of the bacteria well, in the gut? Yeah, great question. Well, first of all, uh, we, we have 100 trillion bacteria lining that 27 feet of GI tract. And we have actually uh, more bacteria than we have human cells. We're actually 90% bacteria and only 10% human That's cells. That's interesting. Huh? Cellular, cell, cell wise, there's only about five pounds, or I don't know, what is it, five or 10 pounds, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it? three, it's about three and a half to four pounds of, if you weigh the bacteria because they're microscopic. Right. That's why you don't see them. So that's an excellent question. Uh, it's, you know, um, science has shown, because I, I've gone through about uh, 5,000 research articles in my life, uh, that, you know, it's, it's about a billion or two billion uh, healthy microbes that make it uh, through shelf life and your gastric juices that will have an impact on this uh, microflora. And the reason being is that if the bacteria come intact uh, into your small intestine, uh, they can multiply rapidly as well. Uh, you can have uh, from one cell growth to uh, 8 billion cells within a couple of hours. So, in other words, if you take a, a, a 10 billion unit supplement, it could be 800 billion or... or right, but, but, the, but, but the problem is that, uh, you know, uh, I call it the numbers game. You will see these supplements and they'll tell you they've got 50 billion, 100 billion. What they don't tell you is since the government is not checking, a lot of that potency dies on the shelf. Those organisms oh, are stressed. That's, that's and a they great don't point. survive stomach acid. Um, well, I want to talk know, about that. We've got to take a break. I want to talk about the whole stomach acid thing, empty stomach, full stomach. Hang tight, Natasha, if that's okay. We've got to take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben talking to the mother of the probiotic industry, Natasha Trenev. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a break and be back right after this. Don't go away. It's absolutely heartbreaking. All over America, people are suffering from issues related to angina pain, high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, irregular heartbeat, clogged arteries, and high cholesterol. Can you live your life free from sickness, pain, and fear, and experience your body's healing itself? Look to Heart and Body Extract, an all-natural supplement that aids ailing bodies. It is an exclusive formula of wildcrafted and organic herbs. End the pain without all the side effects of prescription drugs. People 20 years younger will envy your vitality. Want a happier, healthier you? Then go to heartandbody.com or call toll-free 866-295-5305 for free information. Heart and Body Extract offers a lifetime guarantee with no price increase in over 14 years. What are you waiting for? Call Heart and Body now at 866-295-5305 for your free information or go to heartandbody.com. Distributor inquiries are welcome. Many are in disbelief today after word of shocking allegations against a Minnesota-based talk syndication company known as GCN. It's claimed that they're the fourth largest talk syndication company in the U.S., making it even more scandalous that they've been accused of helping business owners expose themselves on a massive scale. Let's go live to Tom for more on this story. It's being called the greatest exposure of our lifetime, while other business owners are beginning to step forward claiming they, too, exposed themselves with the help of GCN. It's true. They're all guilty. Every last one of them. GCN helped me get the exposure my company needed. And just think, that was years ago. Today, GCN has like 700 affiliate stations and over 6 million downloads from iTunes and their website every month. Imagine the exposure your company can get. Expose your business to the masses. Email advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. GCN. In an unpredictable world, it's good to know you are in control of food, your greatest dependency. Go Foods are storable for 25 years, quick fix, non-GMO, kosher, health store quality food at discount store prices delivered to your door. Go Foods is there when you need it most. Feed your free to packages available with up to three months of food for free. Call Go Foods at 1-800-648-9753 or on the web at www.storefoodnow.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. 
We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Free from the shackles of corporate America, we're the place for independent thinkers. GCN. All right, we're back on the bright side talking to Natasha Trenev, a probiotic expert and the author of Probiotics, Nature's Internal Healers. Uh, before we get to this whole digestive uh, stomach, stomach acid, empty stomach, uh, topic, Natasha, give out your website real quick if people want more information. Uh, yes, uh, please go to trynatron.com or call uh, 800-536-4833 and you'll have real people who've worked with a company for 10 or more years that really want to help you. Okay, good deal. Now, I, I get this question all the time, and I've talked to manufacturers about this, and some manufacturers say take their product in a full stomach, some say take an empty stomach. What's your take on this? Okay, well, first of all, let me say that um, virtually 90% of the products on the market that are called probiotics are not made by the people who sell them. And if you call up their company, they have no research or scientific personnel on their uh, staff. So I can only tell you how it's best to take our product. Our products have delivery systems, uh, the, the most uh, advanced delivery system, I would say, in the world today. Uh, is the uh, oil matrix we have in the Healthy Trinity uh, that's been tested by a German institute uh, to survive stomach acid uh, at 1.8 for over an hour. So they can, so you I can take the product, a, a you can take the product with food? At, uh, over an hour. Uh, I'm sorry. So that's, that's what matters. So that product you can take with or without food, um, and so that I can, I can say that safely. Now, the products that have our supernatant, which is the original growth medium, is a buffer, and it will survive very well uh, even below uh, three-point pH. And so, um, uh, you know, both of our products, I, I recommend the powdered po products or the powdered capsule products you take uh, slightly before a light meal. People don't eat heavy meals anymore. Uh, or you can take it, uh, you know, two hours after an, uh, an antibiotic, all of our products. So uh, the people who say that you have to take it with a meal, it's because they have absolutely no protection for the bacterial cells. They just have carriers like maltodextrin or cellulose, and that provides zero protection for the bacteria. So they take a chance in telling you to uh, take it with food, so hoping that uh, some bacteria will survive uh, um, while, you're, while the food is being digested and uh, transported into the small intestine. Interesting. Now, how about using other supplements with the probiotics? Is there anything else you could use with the probiotics to help improve the absorption or the way the body utilizes the bacteria? No, I, I, um, I don't uh, um, uh, approve of anything. I mean, you can take your... You can take your regular vitamins, but I wouldn't take um, anything that has antimicrobial uh, properties along with the probiotics, such as medicinal herbs uh, or anything that, you know, uh, any of the oregano oils or peppermint oils, et cetera, that uh, could be damaging the um, bacteria. But, you know, your B vitamins or your multiple vitamins, that's perfectly fine, and even your minerals are perfectly fine to take with the probiotics. What about supporting the implantation and growth of the bacteria, i.e. prebiotics? 
Okay, well, great question. Uh, you know, prebiotics, uh, so that everybody understands, are indigestible sugars. And depending on how long the sugar molecule is, is uh, how, you know, indigestible it is. But usually uh, anything that has three molecules or more is indigestible by the body, uh, by the body and is utilized. It's what we call a direct feed for the microbes. And the reason I don't like uh, prebiotics along with the probiotics, because one, it's just put in there as a carrier. And uh, so if this particular prebiotic is not uh, um, uh, desired by the bacteria that you're selling with it, it's going to be attacked by other bacteria in your gut. So you're taking a chance that now you're introducing a probiotic organism, but with food that not necessarily be will utilized by the bacteria. Mm. And so uh, you, you may be stimulating uh, something else in your gut that you don't want. And that's why I'm very careful when I tell people, look, the reason bacteria need to thrive is to, if you uh, include the original uh, growth medium, which we call the supernatant, which the bacteria already has produced substances that it needs and wants uh, to survive. Uh, throwing in just prebiotics um, with a probiotic uh, uh, bacteria that you can't verify that this is exactly the food that this bacteria want is just taking a chance. Mm, so different bacteria have different substrates or different foods that they yeah, eat? Yeah, for basically? instance, I'll give you a great example. There's an organism called Lactobacillus rhamnos, and the reason it's called rhamnos is because it digests this very um, unusual sugar called, uh, which, which is a rhamnos. rhamnosis. And uh, which is a rhamnos sugar, I'm sorry. The bacteria is rhamnosis. Uh, so therefore, you have specific bacteria that like specific sugars. For instance, uh, uh, fructooligosaccharides are also liked by Klebsiella, which is not such a friendly organism mm -hmm. for your health. Interesting. Does Klebsiella live in the gut ordinary, under ordinary circumstances? Yeah, it's found in small numbers. That's you know, very we have, interesting. Uh, you know, small numbers, it, depending on our, uh, um, you know, environment and what we are exposed to. I mean, we, we have all kinds of uh, weird or or organisms that hang out uh, in our body but are kept under control because of the uh, greater population of other bacteria and our immune system. So if you're eating a fiber-rich diet and you're eating lots of veggies and, and, and drinking your veggie juices and whatever you're doing to get your fiber and, and prebiotics, how do you know whether you're feeding the wrong bacteria or not. You don't. You don't uh, we just know, for instance, why I advocate the diet that you're talking about uh, is that the diet will have an effect on changing the composition of the gut microbiota. Uh, usually if you're doing what you're talking about, eating vegetables and fruits into a positive uh, change. But what I'm trying to tell you is that even organic vegetables are loaded with microbes today. Mm -hmm. And most people are ignorant. They don't wash their uh, vegetables and fruits sufficiently. So they're, they keep, you know, every time you eat, breathe, and drink, uh, you're loading your body with bacteria. The, the question is, uh, are, are you, do you have enough of the right bacteria mm -hmm. to counteract that, mm -hmm. which you're ingesting on a daily basis? Well, I think that that's a very important question is, are there natural checks and balances in the gut and in the body that you can leverage? Well, the natural checks and balances is that, number one, uh, we've changed the composition of our gut for the last 60 years. Uh, and, and we know that you have to supplement and target specifically bacteria for the small intestine, the large intestine, and the transient flora. That I know for sure because, like I said, I've spent 45 years investigating this. Uh, and you have to know exactly what you're adding to your diet. It's no longer uh, just throwing darts at a board because the external environment has changed dramatically. Uh, you really have to uh, know this science like you do the science of your iPhone, uh, because if you learn the science of your gut, you'll probably um, eliminate 90% uh, chance of getting a disease. That's great, great advice. I want to talk about leaky gut syndrome. I want to talk about uh, brain health and, and brain fog issues, as well as uh, constipation, diarrhea, and other digestive problems. We're going to run out of time, though. Uh, real quick, give out your website and the phone number again, and then... Uh, uh, people can buy the book on Amazon, Probiotics, Nature's Internal Healers. Yes, and they can call our company directly and get it. Uh, you know, we, we sometimes offer um, offers where they, if they buy the product, they'll get the book for free. So we try to, you know, our, our primary uh, reason for existence is to educate people, and, and probiotics is all we do. We actually um, <clears throat> formulate and manufacture our own products, and I personally research every product that we make. And you're out of Florida? You're doing this in Florida? No, or no, where? we're in uh, Westlake Village, California. 
Okay, right in the factories in, uh, biotechnology that... uh, corridor. Where is that S Southern California? Yes, that... Southern California. Yes, oh, we're correct. right here down the street from <clears throat> uh, Amgen and Baxter. Oh well, that's awesome. You know, I got so much I want to talk to you about. We can we have you on? We'll have you on back on. Is that okay? Because there's tons oh, of stuff. I'd love to be, but let me let me just give them the website. It's uh, Trinatren, uh, spell N A T R E N dot com, and okay. please call eight hundred five three six four eight three three. Do you go out to supply side? Are you going to be in Las Vegas by any chance? Uh, no, I don't go to supply side, but I do go to Expo uh, West. I don't go always go Expo East. I don't know if I'm going to go this year, but I'm usually at, uh, at Expo West, which I helped to start, by the way. Is that right? Did yes, you know, do you uh, know you the know, New Doug Hope Green, people? Doug Green, who's the founder of uh, you know Doug Green? Expo West, was my friend, and I, he needed my help, and that's another long story. That's a great story. You know, Doug is from, uh, Doug used to use my skincare products, and I used to hang out with Doug in New Hope back in the 1980s, believe oh my it or goodness. not. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Nobody knew anything about health back then. Do Dr. Uh, Natasha Trenev, author of Probiotics, Nature's uh, Internal Healers, and uh, trinatron.com uh, is her website, The Mother of Probiotics. There's so much to talk about when it comes to bacteria and probiotics, and like you say, there's a lot of misunderstandings and non-understandings about this very important health subject. Right, so and the thing is that nobody's ever challenged me on the science. Um, you know, I've never gone into this business just for the money. It was a passion of mine, and uh, I, I inherited this from a family who goes back 700 years in this business. Oh, wow. And so it's not just a, a, a marketing or a business idea for me. Hey, uh, Natasha, can I, uh, we're out of time, but can I get you to hang on the line just a moment? I want to talk to you off air. Can you just hang on? Absolutely. Okay, My hang pleasure. on. Thank you. Thank you. That was Natasha Trenev, mother of probiotics, trinatron.com. Check out her website, and uh, her book is Probiotics, Nature's Internal Healers. You guys know, if you've listened to this program, you know that I absolutely love probiotics as nutritional supplements for all kinds of things. It's the foundation of health, the good bacteria in the gut. Thanks for listening, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin health, hyaluronic acid, and skin exercise. Have yourselves a spectacular, beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.